Thank you so much for staying with us. Um, and we, will, we are about to start the Q&A. Um, so just to let you know how it works, because you know rules and COVIDs and for your safety. If you have any question, we will ask you to come here to ask your question over here, because we're trying to limit exchange of the microphone from one person to the other. If it feels too complicated, feel free to ask the question and I will repeat it on the microphone so Karim could hear it and also because it's recorded. So feel free to do whatever makes you more comfortable. And if you feel like also asking your question in Arabic, also please feel free to do so. Amir speaks Arabic, I can also translate. If you have to ask questions in Arabic, I hope we can ask questions. And uh, let's welcome Amir <laughs> on Zoom. Thank you for the technology. <laughs> Thank you all for <clears throat> Marhaba Amir. Thank you so much for sharing your film with us. And uh, we're very happy to um, ask you a few questions. So if you want to say a few words before we start. Uh, Sure, of course. First of all, thank you everyone for attending. Um, I really appreciate it and uh, I hope you had a thoughtful watching and I look forward to hear your thoughts. Um, and yes, thank you very, very much for, for this uh, special screening as well. Thank you. Where are you Zooming from? I'm from Berlin right now. You're in Berlin. Okay, so I, I will start with a couple of questions, but please, at any moment, if you feel like asking a question, interrupt me, I don't mind. But I was, I was very curious when I read about your film, and after I watched the film, and especially with the title, I'm personally a huge fan of um, French uh, writer Albert Camus, and when I read The Stranger, and we watched the film, and the alienation, and this, um, character of Adnan, which reminds me so much at some point of the character of Albert Camus and the stranger. How far did I go in my analysis or is it, or am I, I'm close. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, um, at, at the end, when you watch a movie, you, you usually refer, uh, not only a movie, if even when you see a painting, sometimes you refer it to your uh, own own backgrounds and your vocabulary. Let's let's say that's for sure. So if if, if you really felt that uh, connections um, uh, between uh, Albert Camus, the stranger, and Adnan, our our main character, then for for me this is something I I look to hear forward really. Um, my intention, I never intended to make any, of course, uh, this is not uh, adaptation or anything uh, close to that, but uh, I'm also affected in general by, by the um, um, existential uh, authors and uh, the existential questions, uh, that's, that's for sure. So maybe that can be seen, the motives of, um, of this theme. Uh, so that's maybe the closest, and the name may be the only similar <laughs> from my um, side, I would, I would say, the only similar thing that I really intended to use it. And, and how close is The Stranger to Amir Fakhreddin? How close is it to you? Or let's put it in, in other words, what motivated you to write this story and the character of Adnan? Uh, it is close to me in, in many different ways. First of all, um, it is not an autobiographical uh, film or, or anything like that, but it is more of a collection of uh, experiences and emotions uh, from different people. Uh, of course, from my own life, from from my parents' life, but also from people who I never met, such as the, the whole theme of the of the uh, returning of, of of the Syrian wounded man, which is for me. Um, I kind of uh, sensed this emotion of, of many, many people and refugees outside their, their uh, homes or were expelled by, by, uh, by the wars and, um, and that they really feel that, you know, they are like, all they have, they, that they inherited some kind of uh, absence. So, so this is feeling, this is a, a certain emotion that I also ref refer to in this, in, in this film. So the film is not only me, but is also you. It's, uh, it's, it's our parents, it's our grandparents. It's, um, I try to do this collection of emotions. So, um, and, uh, but you know, in order to do that, you have also to be very, very personal. So 
uh, being a stranger, uh, you know, you don't have to flee, uh, you know, flee like me to, to Berlin to feel strange, but you can also feel stranger, unfortunately, in, in between your own and amongst your own people. So, yeah, absolutely. And and you have two strangers in your film. So you have Adnan, who is feeling completely alienated in his own land, as you just put it. But you also have another uh, character that he meets who is a complete stranger as well and we have absolutely no idea of which side he's with is he a friend or is he an enemy and it didn't seem to matter but it felt like it triggered something not only to the narrative of your film but also to your main character if you want to elaborate more on 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 this uh yeah there is i mean he, he is a total stranger and that was really uh, of course also um uh, intended in order also to try to uh, treat uh, political views, uh, because when when the war you know started, uh, the crisis started in Syria and the revolution started, uh, we we only heard the war as as you see in the film, and uh, that is such a strange, uh, really by itself strange experience to live war from afar. And uh, since we consider ourselves Syrians under occupation of Israeli occupation, but it's it's been more than half a de half a decade that uh, uh, sorry half a century that that we are away from this homeland uh, from Syria. All of a sudden, when the war started, started to think like, okay, how 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 Syrian are we? Like, are we really part of the Syrian? Uh, like, can we refer to the Syrian streets now in in times of crisis? And therefore, the importance of, of uh, dragging a stranger, which is this this wounded man, dragging him and putting him in in you know uh, in the situation with these people, um, was was also um, uh, meant to to generate this uh, question of uh, our belonging, and uh, and what is really our problem? Is it is it. Uh, 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 loyalty, or is it, uh, you know, uh, like because time passes and I think uh, crisis uh, gets bigger and bigger. So, uh, so that's the first uh, stranger for me. Yeah, but but the main stranger in this film is Adnan, and th that's why I refer uh, who I refer to in the, in the film. Great. Um, any question from the audience? Was the film fully uh, filmed in the Golan Heights, the location of the yes. filming? Yeah, it's it's full on the in the Golan Heights. It's a, we want to talk about the cinematography at some point, but I leave it to the audience to ask questions. Uh, any other questions? I don't think there are many films that have been shot in that location, if I'm not mistaken. Or, or at least we haven't seen any lately because it, it's, it's kind of new. Uh, you know, um, there, this is the first film from the Golan Heights, from the Cuba Golan Heights. Uh, I mean, maybe there was uh, an Israeli film that has been shot in the area dealing with like, but, but that's like, I, I wouldn't consider it as a film from the Golan Heights, of course, but uh, so so yeah so this is the film the first film uh, or let's say the first also feature film uh, narrative from the Golan Heights so uh, from someone who knows the Golan Heights not not from the occupier let's say so that's me. yes go ahead please so did the villagers get involved from the Golan Heights or the location where you were filming and what did they think about it, right? What was their reaction? Uh, so yes, it's a very nice question because, uh, of course, you know, in order to shoot a film, you know, there, there usually there's, there's a mess, you know, so, so all the village really felt that we are shooting a film and that's for them was really something very new. They did not some, you know, uh, many people did not really know what is a film set, and and but still, people were so generous. Say they 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 opened their houses for us, and they were like so uh, welcoming. Um, although this is my people, they know me, but still, like the production the crew was was you know for, uh, foreigners and Palestinians, and so but but everyone felt this this warmth from from the people. That for me, it wasn't granted because. 
it wasn't for, uh, uh, given because because really they don't know how is it and because sometimes you have to keep shooting in the middle of the night and the people were really nice and and uh, and understood it and uh, they were really really welcoming um uh, also many um some of the actors are non-actors from the village so i wanted to have this mixture between professionals and uh, actor non-actors from the village to to give this uh, uh, aura of 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 the place uh, the most possible did they feel also that or were they curious about the story did they ask you about what the film is about and did they feel like did they have a reaction regarding sharing their own story or filming for the first time with someone from from within uh, yes, I mean, uh, for sure, the people were uh, curious all the time. Uh, of course, they ask, "What is the story about?" But, but what can you say in like in that in that moment? You you can't you know tell the whole film. But th you would say that this is a film about um, about a man who like that this this as as simple as it you know like uh, about an unlicensed doctor who subverts his uh, village expectations uh, when he meets with a. Uh, uh, a mysterious soldier uh, laying in the border fence, uh, but, but so people, you know, were were really excited about. It. And I think the idea that there is this this treatment with uh, with the border that 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 we that there is a Syrian um, uh, young man uh, needs our help. This is this is was really maybe that the people were really always um, uh, let's say were really curious about because because really we had this 10 years of hearing the war but not seeing the war yeah so 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 only in cinema we could we could maybe perhaps uh, use and um, conjure some some horizons that we that we never never been to so. any other questions from the yes go ahead So he's saying congratulations on the film and on the cinematography, and uh, he's asking also how spread the film has, you know, where did it go, and what was the reaction uh, with different audiences and in Syria. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, would I, uh, sh should I, so the film premiered in, in uh, uh, Venice Film Festivals, uh, uh, Venice Festival, and then um, went to also run in other festivals like uh, Cairo. And uh, so, so actually b um, the audience in, 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 the, um, in Europe were, uh, for me, were also a surprise that, because this, this story or this film is really specific and there is very, uh, a lot of uh, uh, details that it really matters, or at least maybe let's say, maybe Middle, Middle Eastern people would, would, would get Better, but still, uh, culture-wise, that's that's the beauty ab about film festivals, where where there's a bridge and uh, bridging between cultures. And I was really surprised by by the by the um, acknowledgement that they had about this region, which I thought and and always when I was asked, I said, the Golan Heights is the forgotten occupation. Like no one is talking about it. It's been more than fifty years and. So, but I was really surprised to see that people are aware, and especially in Italy and in Germany and in France, uh, where where the film have been showing, and um, so so for me that's that was my like that was I, I was impressed by this. Um, otherwise, it went in the, in the Arab world and and in, it was in Cairo where where it uh, I was so happy and grateful that it also won uh, best Arab film and and best film in the Critics Week com competition. So. Uh, also, the I start to get messages from from the Arab world and uh, letters and and uh, ex expressing that they that they they didn't um, know this before. Also, like some some people didn't know even about the about our our struggle. You know, so I don't know if I'm answering the question, but maybe that's yeah. that's. 
Yes, yeah, yes, you are, and I think it's important because the reaction of the film is is something that our audience here is curious about, especially to know that there hasn't been many stories from the Golan Heights from an internal perspective. So I think it means a lot, not only for people from the the place, but also from outside to learn more about these little nuances. Um, other questions? Yes, please. So um, the lady here is asking about the connection with Germany. Was it only through funding or was there any relationship to the content as well? Was there any artistic um, influence to the film? So uh, it, is, it is a co-production. Exactly. So, so we, had, uh, we had the German funding and, and by having that, uh, uh, part of the contract is is like you have to whether you know you have to spend the German or the you know the foreigner money uh, uh, you have to spend it on German so so we had part of the crew was German and we also did the post production in Germany as as part of the agreement uh, on in 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 films and in co production terms. So there was nothing related to the content or artistic no, no. okay. Did this answer your question? Go ahead. Okay. So uh, Leila asks her husband several times regarding emigration. So they're asking about, is this even a possibility for Syrians in the Golan Heights? Is this an option that is available or how complicated this is? Yes, uh, yeah, it is, it is uh, available um, because, okay, but then maybe I have to say about, maybe I'll mention a fact or two about, about the residents of the, of the occupied Golan Heights because so uh, after the occupation uh, in, in 1967, uh, um, the people uh, um, lived under under the occupation, and then in the uh, 80s, the Israeli government decided that the Golan is is Israeli, and then they came to the people, and they offered them the Israeli nation nationality, um, and the people refused to have it, uh, declaring that they are you know their their loyalty to Syria. And uh, and by that, you know, uh, it was like a six month uh, protest. People did not go out of their homes in order to to uh, uh, um, protest their their um, uh, declining the, the Israeli nationality. So therefore, after that, we don't have um, any nationality. I mean, at least for the generation who was born after the 67, we don't have any nationality. So. Israel issued issued the, the people a uh, document which is a travel document, and in this travel document it's like a laissez passer, and um, it it shows that a nationality field it's written undefined. So basically, I am undefined. Like I, I don't say that because this is the was the Israeli def de definition to my situation. I am Syrian, but I don't had uh, had um, I don't have any Syrian documentation. I don't have access to Syrian documentations. Uh, but that does not uh, deny my my belonging to Syria. But anyway, on the on the on the land uh, on the reality, uh, it's uh, people have uh, no no nationality, no citizenship of any country. But in uh, uh, on the on the other hand, they have this Israeli issued paper, which is a travel document. They can travel with it around the world, but it's written you're undefined. And if you want to travel, of course, you, it's a long process because you have to ask for visa to everywhere. So, uh, but still, the migration uh, um, uh, idea is, is open uh, if you need it, of course, because also living in this place for long time and like also that you know the the, the um, it's it's um, many many people migrated actually uh, uh, for 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 you know for other countries. Uh, my my parents they were studying in the Soviet Union uh, and they and they came back because the Soviet Union 
and uh, Kiev, and uh, especially uh, it, it fell down. So they came back to the Golan Heights, uh, and then they, at some point when I was a child, I remember them wanting to migrate. They had the idea to migrate to Canada or something like that. So, so it's always been the, like because this this place, you know, with time, it's it holds it's the silence and the, and the feeling of the weight uh, is is really present. So. Uh, that's it's it's like on a psychological level it is really hard yes. Any last questions? Um, I I'm really curious about the cinematography. It's stunning and uh, it it reminds me a little bit of Abbas Kiarostami in his zigzag. Uh, mountains Nuri Bel Jailan, but it has a very unique touch, which is really unique to the film, and it felt like it's a reflection of what, especially Adnan is feeling. Um, it's always cloudy, it's always cold, it's always gray, but at the same time, it's really beautiful. If you can tell us a little bit about, you know, the reasoning behind this stunning cinematography. Thank you, first of all, this is a, a compliment. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, actually, um, for me, the static visual rhythm uh, is important, and and um, um, it is like more, you know. And this static visual rhythm allows allows the audience to marinate in the moment, uh, and it offers them, in my opinion, to choose their own patterns uh, and reveal important narrative inf information. That's how I see this. Uh, uh, um, uh, approach and and why do I choose it? And in in, a, in another words, like you know, the intention is not to show the audience the world at at large, but uh, but 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 to plunge them into the midst feel of this world. You know, using using the static visual rhythm, and um, even even when the camera remains at a considerable uh, distance from from the subject matter, for 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 example, on uh, screen. The, the intention here is to establish uh, numerous spaces beyond the visual field, you know, uh, by by fragmenting uh, the sound design to include other sounds, such as, you know, the sounds of war that are unseen, the, the wind and the fire in the heating stoves. And so, so in short, using all these techniques I mentioned uh, helped help me to create uh, an expanse that extends uh, far beyond what uh, what the viewer can see at any moment, or or perhaps uh, make them um, see things that are otherwise uh, out of sight. Let's let's say so. Uh, so there was, of course, there is an approach to this visual rhythm, and uh, uh, that's maybe what I can say shortly about it. And 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 we feel it actually because I think it does make us imagine beyond what we see and into what we hear as well. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Amir, this is the first of a trilogy. If you can tell us more about it. Yes, uh, so as, as I intended uh, to, to make a trilogy out of the theme, because it's for me, it's so hard to talk uh, in, in one film um, or, or, to, or to try to explore a question I, I have or a certain feeling or try to extract a certain feelings uh, that I have in one film. And therefore, also, I don't follow maybe the narrative uh, structure or the, the like I try to get rid of storytelling many times in, in, in order to um, uh, generate the, the emotion. So for me, this this question regarding home is is, is the part of um, is, is the project of a trilogy. And this first film is about Adnan, who who dreams about a magical land. Uh, who, who is for me is a nostalgic character, you know, uh, and 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 as, as I usually used to say that nostalgia, you know, itself has a utopian dimension, uh, though it's it's never directed to, uh, toward the future, and sometimes nostalgia is not also directed uh, toward the past either, uh, but rather sideways. So it can be also directed to the to the to the future, in my in, in my opinion. Uh, so it could be longing for a home that uh, longing for a home that uh, no longer exists, or longing for a home that never existed before. Uh, however, you know this feeling of, of Adnan is a sentiment of, of uh, sentiment of loss and displacement. 
you know, but uh, but also it's a romance, kind of a romance with one's own fantasy. So so for me, this character I think, is, a future, is is nostalgic towards the future. As many of us in the in the Arab world these these days, we I I I hope and I suppose that we fantasize about a magical homeland and and there in the final uh, act of the film he also kind of expresses it that that he feels strange but in this estrangement as if it's part of his suffering as of also understanding his suffering uh, that is a part of uh, where he only can dream about a magic homeland that he doesn't know so so that's for me uh, some of the first part of a trilogy and in a diff in the, ne the next part of the trilogy would be dealing with uh, okay if if i displaced him and i put him in a different position where 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 where, where maybe adnan's wife laila wanted to be uh, so how would this estrangement feeling uh, become uh, or or in on yeah yeah if evolve so so it would be more that the second film would be about uh, uh, a character that is uh, that that have to spend his life in exile uh, as a stranger amongst other strangers, and the question of home arises in from different uh, perspective and uh, generates different emotions. But at the end, I think it's um, so it's it's more of a study of a character study of uh, our let's say uh, this era character study of uh, of the Arab era uh, character study. Thank you so much, Emir. Thank you so much for sharing your film with us and. Uh, you know, sharing your insights and your thoughts about it, and good luck with uh, with the trilogy. We're looking forward to see uh, to see them hopefully soon. And um, you know, your beautiful cinematography. And I, at some point, I did not rec recognize the father who is played by the legendary Mohammed Bakri. It took me a little bit before I was like, I know this face. This is how charismatic they were on screen, but also completely different from what they usually are. So good luck with that, and uh, we hope to see you in uh, future Cinemana screenings. And talking about home and The Stranger, this is a theme that's been recurrent throughout the last two years, uh, even when we went virtual. And by the way, this is the first in-person uh, screening in our theaters in two years, so this is really special, and it's, it's, it's very timely and timeless now watching this film um, and triggering this beautiful conversation. Good luck and hope to see you soon and thank you so much for being with us. Thank you everyone, thank you Reed. thank you Sinemana and uh, it was a pleasure for me uh, talking to you tonight. Uh, so thank you very much for coming and uh, uh, having this thought thoughtful talk, thank you. Thank you, Amir. And if you want, would like to share your opinion about the film, please feel free to use our social media. It's NYUAD Art Center on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And we hope to see you Wednesday and Thursday with um, 32 Sounds with Sam Green, um, the live performance. And um, good night. Thank you. <laughs>